Hello, in this video we find the maximum likelihood estimators for the two parameters in a gumball distribution. Uh, this is part one because in part two we're going to illustrate these methods that we drive here and copy them into R and run it and then compare it with what we get using say the built-in function uniroot in part two. We're going to derive the maximum likelihood estimators first. So the density of a gumball distribution is a two parameter distribution or density mu and sigma but now those aren't the mean and the variance of this distribution it's just the shift parameter and the scale parameter and this is the crazy uh, formula for the density of a gumbo this is for a data point or one value but and to create maximum likelihood we need a sample so let's take a sample of size n so it's a vector of size n and then it, these are all independent, so it's the product of these. So, so this term becomes this. You know, I take the reciprocal and raise it to the nth power. Since this is an exponential, we end up summing the um, exponents, which is this piece right here. Now, this is the joint density, but if we think about this differently, switch the u and sigma, put it here, put the data here, then this becomes a likelihood function. And so if you're watching this video, you're probably familiar with that step. So now we want to take the log of the likelihood. So, but it's really it's the same as this. We just think about that the parameters are random and the data are fixed. So we, we call the log likelihood L, which is the natural log of the likelihood. And so this becomes this. So you know, the, the minus n comes out front, log of that, and the e goes away, and we just get what's in the exponent here. Now, to simplify this one more step, okay, so this comes down, but this sum, we let the x and the sigma be by itself, and then we sum the mu and the sigma, but there's no index, we get n of them. And this sum here, there, it's, this is the product of two exponential functions, this and then plus this. And so we can take that exponential out front of this sum. And then what's left is just this, um, this exponential. So now we want to maximize this in for mu and sigma. So let's take the partial derivatives. First, we'll take the partial derivative of mu. So this, there's no mu, so that's zero. This is zero. This is uh, n sigma. And this is, uh, there's just one, so it's, it, you know, it's this, then times the derivative of, the, the, of what's inside here. So that is um, one over sigma, right? Times the exponential. That's the derivative of this, and then there's no mu here, so that's constant, so it's out front. We set it equal to zero. Now let's solve this for mu. So now, if we multiply everything by sigma, that gets rid of that, and then we take this to over here, and then divide by this piece, or I mean, I'm sorry, this sum, because we want to isolate mu by itself. So this, we subtracted this over, we get this, and then we divide this over and we get this. Now let's take the log of both sides. And if we take the reciprocal of this, then it's a minus one and it can be brought out front of the log. And then we multiply by the sigma and that's what we get here. So this is our estimate for mu hat. So this is, this is one of the equations that we have to solve. So now let's take the partial with respect to sigma. So here we get minus n, 1 over sigma. Here, um, now I like to take this up to the top and make it sigma inverse. So then when we take the derivative, that minus 1 makes that a plus. And then, and then the sum of the xi's, I'm just going to call x bar n, so, the, so this is the sum of the xi's, and then we get uh, minus 2, so sigma squared. And then here, 
it's the same. We take it up to the top. That's or at least that's the way my mind thinks. Take the minus out front and then minus two, but we take it down, we get sigma squared, and the mu is a constant that stays there. Now here this is going to be the product rule. So the derivative of um this is is this piece here so that we get the same exponential back but when we take the derivative of this we have to take the minus up so it comes out front that's where that minus mu is and then we get sigma squared and then it's times this and then we get the the this which is this times the derivative of this but um, when we take it up there's a minus that comes out front then we take the derivative of this and we get that xi. That's what this little piece here is. But then we get that sigma squared, which is here. Right? So we get this piece here. Now we set it equal to zero. And now we, uh, we what we want to do is maybe get this equation in terms of sigma by itself. Okay? So the first thing we do is take everything times sigma squared. So it gets rid of all of these and then it, there's one in the top, right? So that's what that's where we get So that's what we get here, right? And then we get minus x bar squared, but here so we get rid of the sigma, we got n but we, we're sticking in mu, this mu for this mu. So then that, then the minus cancels with that and we get sigma log of this. Now, this is where it gets crazy. And I'm not going to go through every little step, but so when we substitute mu in here, then we get... Um, Oh, we just get this piece here, right? So that for that mu, we got rid of the sigma squared when we multiplied. And then when we stick in mu here, the sigmas cancel. Then we raise that over and, and the e and the um, e and the log cancel, leaving just the exponent, which is this. But yeah, and then we have to take the derivative. No, th this is it. Because we took the minus over to the top, which switched the, the order of these. So the n is on top now. So that's what this is. And then we take it times this, right? And then it's plus. And then we have to do the opposite. Then we take it, then uh, the sigma's gone. But when we stick in this sigma here, we get this again. And then there's there's no mu here, so it just comes down equal to zero. Now these all right. So here this and these cancel. So like this cancels with that, and we're left with n out front. So it's minus n sigma log, and this is plus n sigma log. So those two cancel. Over here, it just stays the same. But notice there's an n everywhere. So let's divide everything by n to get rid of those. And then we're going to take everything to the other side. So this be, um, since we this just becomes sigma. That's minus. And then this minus makes that a minus, but we take it to the other side so it's a plus. And we're left with this. And that's equal to zero. Now this is what we need to solve for sigma. We need to maximize this in terms of sigma. And then once we know sigma here, then we can plug it back into our estimate for mu. So to do that, we're going to use what's called the Newton-Raphson method. And I have a video called Newton-Raphson and Gauss-Newton methods. And we want to use it for this function, f of this. And this is what we just derived. It equals zero, right? So the algorithm is 
we have an, an initial guess and this is the derivative of this function and then we get a new guess for sigma and we just keep repeating well we have this function so let's find this derivative and that is a burger so we're taking the derivative with respect to sigma so that's a one that's a zero and plus and so th it's this divided by this and then so we have to use that crazy quotient rule you know where it's this times the derivative of that and then derivative of this times that all over that squared and so hopefully you can see that and and be able to copy that I'm not going to go through it so the step was estimate sigma with sigma hat using the Newton Rapson so this method is going to get us an estimate for sigma then step two is use our estimate to plug back in to estimate mu and one and we're done and those are the maximum likelihood estimates for um, a gumbo distribution and now we're going to illustrate this in R and so we're going to copy this equation and this into into R and just run it iterate it you know 10 20 30 times until we come up with an estimate of sigma and then we're going to plug it in mu and, and then be done. But the cool thing is we're also going to compare this newton rapson method with the unigroup function, the built-in function in R. And of course they'll come up with the same thing. But it's kind of cool to have that program handy. So anyway, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.